Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Directions Live Online. My name is Manish Patel and I'm your host for today's webinar. Before we get into the session for today, I just want to let you know that the webinar is being recorded. You'll receive a link to the recording via email next week and you can browse our webinar library on SV Australia website at svaustralia.com.au slash webinars. You can submit your questions at any time into the GoToWebinar panel on the right hand side and we'll try to answer as many of as them as we can at the end. If you don't get to your questions, we'll forward it to the presenter and they will get back to you. So today we'll be hearing from our special solutions consultant, Seth Gori, creating an exciting narrative through unique visual designs by pulling maps, map layers as vector, type, as vector files or image artwork into the design application of your choice with a new Adobe Creative Cloud add-on. I think we are all keen to hear from Seth. So without any further ado, I shall hand it over to Seth. Over to you, Seth. Thanks, Manish, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, welcome, everybody. It's um, great to have you all on, on the session. Um, and I guess one of the first questions you're probably asking is, what is ArcGIS Maps for Adobe? Um, it's a relatively new um, uh, add-in and solution um, that Esri's been working on for um, uh, ma many years. Um, and um, I'm really excited to share some of the latest and greatest updates um, uh, with you all today. You're probably asking, where does this ArcGIS Maps for Adobe really fit as part of the broader ArcGIS platform, or what we now know as the Esri Geospatial Cloud? It's a really good question, one I often come up against. If we think about um, those who joined the uh, virtual Esri UC um, a couple of weeks ago, um, you would have heard Jack talking about this increased uh, integration, so open up integration between uh, the geospatial cloud um, with other uh, design suites on the Autodesk side, but also graphics suites such as um, Adobe. And what's really heartwarming, and I just want to take a moment to pause, is um, in Australia, we have um, a, um, a range of very talented um, uh, graphic designers. And I'm just uh, highlighting two um, special um, uh, graphic designers in um, Caitlin, uh, who was the recent winner of the global uh, ArcGIS Maps for Adobe competition. So congratulations. And I just love the uh, the uh, her map on the, the plight of the yellow-tailed black cockatoo across Australia. And it's worth also an honourable mention to Emma, based in WA, uh, with her beautiful uh, rendition of uh, a puffin facts and distribution across the globe. If you're interested, I encourage you to have a look at some of the um, other graphic design maps using this add-in. So what do we do arguably before this great open integration um, that Jack shared uh, several weeks ago at the user conference? Well, arguably one of the, the great things in my role at Esri and the solution engineering component is I get exposure to what our clients are doing and how they're using uh, both our platform as well as other platforms such as the graphic design suites. And often I see this quite challenging uh, and very time consuming um, uh, interplay between a GIS analyst, um, a cartographer or um, uh, map maker, and also uh, the graphic designers or designers on the right-hand pane. And this dance, I'll call it that, is um, very costly to businesses um, and it leads to inherent risks because often there's data silos where uh, maybe the graphic design team don't have the latest um, uh, GIS information. Um, and vice versa, um, maybe the GIS team are producing content where it would be better for um, it to be produced in a, a graphic suite like um, uh, the Adobe platform. So the encouraging story is now we've simplified that through this uh, new open integration with the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe add-in. What this does is it really presents on a spectrum um, this fusion of leveraging the master content that you create in your organization, as well as from other agencies, from a GIS analyst in the geospatial cloud of your own or respective portals across your jurisdiction. 
we still can have that data surfaced inside of non Esri um, applications such as the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, namely uh, Illustrator and Photoshop, which we're going to touch on today. And this is great because we've seen a significant reduction, the likes of you know a four, uh, 40 hour workflow dropping to 40 minutes, um, what would take a, a team of graphic designers um, uh, 40 minutes to produce a, a simple map is now reduced to a matter of four minutes, if not less. So it's really encouraging the, the time saving and re reduction and duplication of effort because it's it's um, leveraging the uh, Esri Geospatial Cloud that many of the um, attendees on the call today uh, will no doubt have access to. So what does it do? It provides direct access to that authoritative content, be it within your organization or as part of the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the world and beyond. So within other open data, and I'm going to bring in some open data sources um, uh, from uh, councils and the like here uh, based in Sydney, um, just so you can see that interplay between your own organization as well as other uh, organizations. The ArcGIS maps for Adobe Add-in, you can download it from our um, ESRI uh, website, um, and this provides an extension that you can enable then inside of both Adobe Illustrator and Adobe, Adobe Photoshop. And what this enables you to do is produce beautiful cartographic and graphic uh, representations of um, uh, maps, but also fuse your maps with other complementary traditional graphic design, maybe iconography or some kind of um, uh, uh, cross-sectional view, maybe for a master plan. Um, otherwise, that might be done by a separate team and we get back into that dance of that lack of integration where we're trying to synchronize maybe an updated design or um, uh, uh, land, land use zoning change in a um, local government area. Um, and we need that to be um, brought to the, the graphic designers. And that was one of the key takeaways, if you recall, a couple of DLOs ago, Directions Live Online ago, um, with the COVID. So in the response to COVID, many councils mentioned and other agencies like utilities that, hey, we've got this communication marketing team, but always um, on the bleeding edge of pushing out comms. How can we enable them to leverage some of our authoritative master data that we curate inside a council and within the uh, authority? Um, and this add-in is a perfect complement to that um, specific challenge um, during that response phase. So with an Illustrator, this enables uh, uh, one extension with two uh, tabs. So the Map Boards tab and the Compilation tab, which I'll delve deeper into in a moment. And this is where we define the map, we compile the map, and we sync the map to the um, uh, Adobe Illustrator file. The same general workflow also applies, including the same tab. So we've got the compilations in the map boards tab within that Photoshop. Um, but here, the focus is really on those raster data sets, the likes of imagery, the likes of some kind of spatial analysis that maybe you've done, um, or maybe elevation or hill shade. Maybe you want that to be fused together with some other um, uh, um, uh, raster data sets inside of Photoshop. Um, then the add-in is perfect uh, complement to that uh, workflow. What I wanted to focus on the front end of this session today is this new support for the Adobe uh, interchange uh, or exchange format. So, uh, they, uh, sorry, a, a dot AIX format is a new um, capability brought to ArcGIS Pro from 2.5 onwards. Um, so I encourage you if you haven't up Upgraded yet, then um, definitely upgrade to 2.5. And really, this has all come about because for many a years, those traditional ArcGIS desktop users have been able to export out to a .ai file, an Illustrator file, and that's been the kind of dance between GIS teams and their respective colleagues in graphic design roles in order to produce quite compelling um, kind of graphic products. Um, so I'd encourage you. Um, if you are using, you've, you've done the migration to Pro, um, then definitely have a look at this new um, Adobe Exchange format. Um, there are some 
additional system requirements, both from the uh, add-in, which you can download from our website, and also from the Illustrator. So uh, just worth noting there. Essentially, what this will do is within Pro, we can export a layout to a .aix file and open that inside of Illustrator. So without any further ado, let, let's jump over now and demonstrate that in flight, and then we'll come back and look at the map boards and the compilation um, uh, components of the add-in um, uh, after this quick demo. Alrighty, so what I have here is a um, is a, a simple layout. So for context, um, if you recall back to uh, our initial discussion, um, and we were celebrating um, our community and the likes of Caitlin, who used that um, uh, yellowtail uh, uh, cockatoo as an example, um, using the ArcGIS Maps for Adobe credit card to, to take out that global prize, which is, is great. Now I was thinking, how would I recreate that habitat across Sydney? And uh, I, I recalled that actually we have a cockatoo. It's um, it's actually not cockatoos themselves, but Cockatoo Island, which is somewhere I've visited in the past. And I thought today we would focus in on that um, in this uh, layout. So you can see here for for um, uh, for proximity. Um, if I just uh, provide that for your your context here. Um, so Cockatoo Island is, is in essentially the middle harbour in Sydney here. And I'm going to zoom back into that area of interest in my layout. And here we've just got some geometry representing the ferry wharf up the top here. We've got some paths or roads. Um, we've got some buildings. Um, and then we've also got some tunnels here below the building. So for those that have visited Cockatoo Island, you'll, you'll know it well. Um, that is quite a... Um, hilly um, inner island, um, and you'll notice these um, cutaways here into the, the uh, Sydney Harbour. So this was formerly the dry docks for uh, many um, uh, warcraft that were built um, on Cockatoo Island itself um, many decades ago. But what I want to do is uh, drop away the elevation, turn back on the kind of broad site area of interest, and I just want to show you. Um, how we could actually get some data um, uh, in order for that to be exported for maybe these slipways. So one of the things that uh, in the most recent update of ArcGIS Online is you can see that I'm signed into my organization here, and that provides access to not just my organization on the right, but also access to ArcGIS Online more broadly, so any publicly shared or available data. And a, a beta um, uh, a series of layers have been shared for Oceania, um, which are minutely updated um, open street map data sets for this range of themes, which is, is quite interesting. So if ever you're struggling to find buildings or uh, amenities, um, then you can get access to those here. Um, for example, if I just add the amenities to the current map, um, momentarily we will see the amenities layer come up to my content pane. There we go. Cool. And there we go. So you can see here we've got an indication from OSM of the Fairy Wharf. We've also got an indication of toilets and um, looks like it's a drinking fountain here as well. This means I don't need to start digitizing anything. I can leverage this as a potential um, open data source. I've dragged in this land use areas um, because what it contains is the spillways or slipways um, of these two dry docks. And I want this to be what's landed inside of my um, Adobe Exchange uh, file format. So let's go ahead and export that now. Um, we do that through the shear pane, a familiar workflow, both within ArcMap and Pro itself. Within the layout, You'll note here we've got a new file type from 2.5 onwards. So we've got a .aix file format. And I'm just going to go ahead and save that layout to uh, my desktop. Let me just let's give this a, a, here we go. And we can set the resolution of this vector data set um, um, and a whole range of other parameters. We can clip it to the extent 
I'm just going to export that now. And because it's a vector data set, it shouldn't take too long. And that's going to compile the layers as vectors, as well as the, the layout, um, meaning uh, our uh, page extent here as the artboard within Adobe Illustrator. So it's exported the file now. I'm going to turn over now to Illustrator. And I'm just going to go in and open the um, file and just share it to my desktop. So here we go. Cool. All right, so you can see here, we have got a map uh, of Pocket 2 that looks uh, identical to the one that we compiled within, um, uh, uh, within Pro before. I'm just gonna pan over to the left here. And then what I'm interested in is the uh, layers pane here. So you can see that from file when we open this .aix exchange format. So this, this is the Adobe Illustrator exchange format that Pro can produce. When we import it, it doesn't actually, it, it actually uh, maintains the semantics and the geometry from Pro. So for example, if I toggle the paths on and off, you can see that they all reside on one artwork layer, which is advantageous from a graphic design perspective. I've also got the, um, the tunnels path here, so underground. But if I wanted to bring it above ground, then I've got flexibility now to select that particular asset and drag that to wherever my heart's content is. Maybe I want it to be um, up here. There we go. And if I just toggle off now, so you can see I've brought my tunnels on top just so that people have that context. Uh, you'll note also that our labels are uh, always a, a pain or bugbear um, to manually have to annotate and label features. We can bring those forward with, from Pro as well, which is, is great. So yeah, I um, encourage you to check out um, Pro in this new Adobe um, uh, interchange exchange format. So we come back now and focus in on the um, uh, the domain, so whilst we can bring data in from Pro uh, in the exchange format, you may, um, as a graphic designer, just want full autonomy to be able to create maps yourself. Um, so the add-in provides that capability and flexibility. Um, so basically, from the map boards, it's similar to uh, art boards. Um, it's not where we preview the map, it's where we just define the map extent, the layers, um, oh, sorry, uh, where, we can use layers to define that extent. So from your organization or maybe a file, like a zip shape file. We can also interactively move the dimensions of the map board as well. So here, in essence, we define the extent, the scale. So that's the level of detail that will be synchronized in the compilation window and the size um, of that, of that um, uh, file as well. From the compile tab, so the compilation window, we get exposure to our layers. Okay, so this is where we add layers from our organization. We can add layers from the Living Atlas. We can add layers that are shared publicly by ArcGIS Online. We can also add the direct support. So if you've got a zip shape file, CSV file that contains geometry, coordinates, addresses, then we can bring that inside of the contents pane within the compilation window as well. One of my favorite features is the GeoSearch. So if you wanted to use our ArcGIS World Geocoding service, you can search for points of interest, addresses, and just add those points here, rather than having like a separate mapping platform up on another screen and manually annotating where that location is and, and labeling it as well. We also get, um, which is really exciting, exposure to some of the ready to use tools that you're familiar with um, from a GIS perspective inside of ArcGIS Online, the likes of um, drive time, so service areas. Um, why is that important? Um, if you're manually tracing, then that's that's um, you know quite significant time. And if there's change, like then that can be um, a burden from our hours to reproduce that asset. So here we can actually expose that, and once we generate that output, um, like a drive time service area, we can actually add that 
uh, to the contents and synchronize that to the layers pane, which is this uh, uh, option here. So from here, when we synchronize from the compilation window, we can choose the DPI. We can also choose um, several processes, um, i.e. when we synchronize a symbol for a ferry terminal, do we want it to always be overridden to be the symbol for that transport for New South Wales uh, use uh, here in, in Sydney? Um, and that's a capability uh, that you can set within the add-in as well. Alrighty, so let's uh, move back to illustrate and quickly demonstrate that um, that workflow in the map boards and compilation. I bring up my Adobe again. If I come up to uh, Windows extensions, this is where we enable the ArcGIS maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. You need to download the uh, install, and that will expose that extension inside of Illustrator and inside of Pro. It's brought up my information here. I'm just going to quickly sign out just so that we can pause to reflect on the available license levels. Sorry about that. My uh, internet was a bit laggy there. Um, so here I've signed out, and you can see now the three options available the complementary account, which gives you access to uh, free. Um, uh, ArcGIS Online content. You also get, um, you can do a plus subscription. Okay, so this is uh, $10 a month. Um, uh, you can get access to premium apps and maps, but most, the majority of users already have an ArcGIS Online account um, and you would want to sign in here. So I'll sign in once again with my user credentials. And this will take me to the um, map boards uh, window. Cool. And the first step is the import. Okay, so you can see we can draw, we can search for an area. So I can search for your island. I can import a file. So I'm going to import a file. I've got a boundary for the local government area for City of Sydney, and it's going to zoom to that extent. Let's close this one in the background. And so import the file there, Sydney boundary. There we go, cool. Um, and you can see here it's taken the out of boundary. I'm not seeing the geometry for the LGA, um, but this has given me the extent, the area of interest. Um, within here, I can choose the uh, preset. So if I want it to be, um, you know, an A4, then I can define that dimension here. But I want to change the level of detail. So it will automatically calculate the level of detail for you. but I want to overwrite that to just be 1 to 36,000. Uh, so that will represent when I view an interactive map, what will I see? So will I see major roads or local roads? Um, that's, that's what's meant by level of detail. I'm going to click OK. If I want to increase this, we can do kind of um, a uh, graduated increase and also decrease. We can also move the pane here. I'm going to focus in instead on a particular area I'm interested in here. And I'm going to go and hit preview and add content. All right, so we've got the content added here, which is a default blue geometry. And if I specify here the base map, we've got the Victor Street map here. Cool. Um, awesome. So I'm just going to quickly change the boundary in the background there. So you can change that style to be no fill, but keep the outline. I'm happy with this. Um, we, so I can go ahead and click sync, click OK. And what it's going to do is essentially emulate what we did before uh, outside of Pro, uh, but instead it's going to compile 
um, a, a new um, .ai illustrator file um, in the background to a default directory that we can set that you saw before. Just while that's doing its thing, Manish, do we have any questions on the on the on the on the line? Um, I see two questions coming through. Okay. Um, and so we, what we can end up with is um, essentially we'll end up with the same layers um, here with the same hierarchy uh, once that's synced, and then. Uh, we'll be able to work that up inside of Illustrator, uh, inside of Photoshop, but also inside of, um, there we go. So I get the construction window, so it's processing here. And we're getting that new uh, Cine Boundary AI file uh, being added here. And it will tell me the progress it's constructing here. And we're done. So here I've got all my labels already done, all the line work automatically generated, uh, which is, is really great. And I think on that note, I'll um, hand back to yourself, Manish, for any questions we might have for the time. Sure. Thank you, Seth. That, that was interesting. Um, so just a quick note to our listeners. We are still taking questions, so go ahead and submit them in the GoToWebinar panel. Um, all right. Our first question is from... Jonathan and Jonathan says, can I change the symbology of the content of a map? Yeah, definitely. So you would have seen before that when we use the um, uh, geometry for the local government area for city of Sydney, it came through as blue. And then within the compilation tab of the add-in, um, we can uh, change that there. But by all means, we could have kept it as the default blue. And then once we'd synchronize that to the layers pane, we could change that inside of Adobe itself. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Seth. Um, we do have another question from Hannah, and Hannah says, can I push my layers and web map back into ArcGIS Online and share them with my organization? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, there are mechanisms for you to um, to do that, um, yeah, and yeah, we can send you through some information with from the Adobe team on on best practice workflows. Um, but the predominant use case is is from the GIS team to the graphic design team. Um, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, thanks, Seth. Um, we do have a couple of more questions, but I think we uh, we are going to have to wrap it up uh, as we are running out of time. Like I said before, if we didn't get to answer your questions, Seth will surely reach out to you with the response. And uh, at the end of this session, a short survey will pop up. You will we really love to um, hear your feedback. So please take a moment to fill out a brief survey and uh, that can um, help us to improve as well as we'll you can reach out to us directly at events at sgaustralia.com.au. Um, and then don't forget to visit our webinar library at sgaustralia.com.au slash webinars to watch our previous episodes. And if you want to be notified of our upcoming sessions, be sure to subscribe and to receive the updates. With that note, um, thanks, Seth, for taking out time and sharing with the community. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you for the next Directions Live online.